Hello! Welcome back to Let's Play Samamax Save the World. This is Culture Shock Episode 2. And I didn't realise how short these episodes were. I should be done two episodes maximum, I think. But anyway, we've still got 17 more episodes after this. So let's continue onwards and speak to this lady here. Hey, Doc. Hey, Sam. Thanks for taking care of that wacko. I wish there was some way I could repay you. Have you got ten grand? I'm new at this. I have a lot of student loans. Great! Loan us a student! I can ride it around like a pony! It's nice to see you show such enthusiasm! Security. Max might like a tattoo. Ooh, yeah! I want a map of the Netherlands on my Netherlands. I get the cold shivers just thinking about remembering hearing you say that. I'm out of the tattoo business anyway. I'm a licensed psychotherapist. Can you fix cars? Ours sometimes makes a noise like an orangutan with the dry heaves. Um, that's my fault. I've been keeping an orangutan in the trunk. Oh, never mind. I'm not much of a mechanic anyway, except with unicycles. I suppose you could psychoanalyze me. Hey, yeah, I could count your marbles for you. I have a license, you know. Will this be painful? Only if we do it right. Now, there are a couple things we can try. We could look at some ink blots, we could try some free association, I could interpret your dreams for you. Um. Well, we will be coming back to this later, but anyway, let's try a, a sample test now. How do ink blots work? And can we make them ourselves? It's easy. I just show you some pictures, and you tell me what you see. Your responses can reveal things like obsessions, or obsessions. Take a look at this and tell me what you see. The results of the last time I let Max drive. All right. Now, how about this one? A bunch of bacteria playing basketball. And this? Coded love notes from space aliens. Alien love notes. Interesting. Now this one. What do you see? A cheering crowd of lanky albinos. And this one? An orangutan trying to escape from the trunk of a DeSoto. Hmm. Your responses are kind of all over the map. I can't tell a whole lot from them. Sorry. Thanks, Doc. Okay, these are going to go on for a little while, so we'll do the rest when we get to where we need to be. Actually, let's save the psychoanalysis for later. Hmm, postponing responsibilities. Interesting. Hey, Doc. Hey, Sam. Is it hard to become a psychotherapist? Oh, yes. It takes weeks. For some people, it's harder not to become one. Bless your overgrown cassava melon, Max. Nice decor you've got in here. Very death metal suburban lounge kitsch postmodern professional. Well, you know, last week this was a tattoo parlor, and before that I was a taxidermy priestess. When I'm gone, I'm hoping to be taxidermied and used as a hat rack. You'll do that for me, won't you, Sam? Of course, little buddy. Friendship is a wonderful gift. Hold all my calls. Sounds like you've jogged around several blocks, career-wise. True. I was even a telemarketer for a while. What did you sell? Telephones. But sometimes a brilliant idea just isn't enough. What other unsavory gems are lurking in your sack full of former careers? I was a cook at a restaurant called Ode O. Very strict vegan. We only served water. That's it? Well, you could get it cold or hot. Staggering. I liked that job, but I got laid off when the thermo-vegetarians picketed the restaurant and insisted they only serve the water at room temperature. Typical. I can't stand thermo-vegetarians. Have you had any other fascinating occupations we could snicker about? I was a grout specialist. <laughs> what? I don't know. There's just something inherently funny about grout. Have you had any other fascinating occupations? I used to be a microfiche delivery driver. What a coincidence! You too? What? No, I was just thinking about how my feet are exactly the same size as each other. Have you had any other fascinating occupations? 
I painted white walls on cheap tires for a while. Have you had any other fascinating occupations? I ran a business doing custom embossing on the bottoms of pie tins. Have you had any other fascinating occupations? I was a door-to-door -door phlebotomist. That sounds dirty, even though it probably isn't. Okay, a couple more, then we'll move on. Have you had any other fascinating occupations? Dozens. Okay, I think that sums it up. Talk at you later, Doc. Interesting choice of words. So now we need to head back to Bosco, so I'm going to start using jump cuts from here. Hello! Right, let's get Wizard back up. What the hell is he doing? Whee! <clears throat> uh, take control of your mind. Is it working? I don't know. Destroy the intruder in your dreams. Snap out of it, you big baby! What's going on? Where... Where's the bathroom? He's back. Quick, act like a chicken. No, tell us where we can find Brady Culture's home for former child stars. We've got to stop that fiend from hypnotizing anyone else. The home? It's a 227... something. Specs would remember the street. He always does the navigating. Can you take us there? Heck no! I've got to take some time out for number one! Well, that was helpful. Right. Now where is Specs? It wasn't outside. I think it's time to get back into the DeSoto. Aha! Here is Specs. Let's wake him up. Take control of your mind. Destroy the intruder in your dreams. Nicely done, Sam. You're a natural. Where am I? Who are you? Don't worry, we're freelance police. Police? Oh no! Quick, follow that soda popper. Yes. Hurry, Sam! He's getting away! So yes, we have to avoid these damn crates. And get close enough to shoot his tires out. Take the wheel, little buddy. This is not going to be fun at all. Take the wheel, little buddy. With pleasure! Got it. Yes! Don't shoot! Aside from the fact that we just plugged your truck, why would you think we'd shoot you? Except for the obvious sport value, of course. It's just, you always see cops on the news beating up on some guy just because he's a former child star. We would never dream of hurting former child stars. We just need to find the home where Brady Culture keeps them. Oh, why didn't you say so? It's right over there, across the street. Jumping elephant fleas! How devilishly convenient! Thanks. Uh, does anyone know how to change a tire? How did he reach those wheel th those um pedals? Anyway, looks like a shifty character to me. Don't they all? Well, it's nice that they have some inklings of the old of well, the old hit the road. Not much of a secret, is it? And also, as well with some of the other Lucas Arts games, a Squinky was mentioned in the last episode. This one's very locked. Hmm. It says here they only treat patients with something called artificial personality disorder. Sounds tasty. What's in it? Apparently it's common in former child stars. 
Symptoms include, uh, let's see, obsession with money, violent reactions to dentistry, and an unconscious desire to marry one's mother. Forsooth! You don't even know what that means, do you? No, but it sounds all classically literate. Well, those three symptoms, they are randomized to each playthrough. We'll get to them momentarily. A disturbing little monkey. Reminds me of a job I had once. You were a monkey? Essentially. I guess this is where you stick your admission form. Locked. The power of Ibo. Looks more like the glower of Ibo. Hmm. The black hole. What's a black hole, Sam? It's a star that's been crushed under its own weight, destined to desolate darkness for all eternity. Okay, there's not nothing more we can do here. Let's head back to Sybil. Where are we going, Sam? Back to the office. Yes, yeah, so Sybil is a licensed psychotherapist, so those three tests you mentioned earlier, we need to get this psychoanalysis done. Do you think I might have artificial personality disorder? Hmm, interesting. Symptoms include, uh, let's see, obsession with money, violent reactions to dentistry, and an unconscious desire to marry one's mother. Hey, I know! I could psychoanalyze you! Can we do some more ink blots? Those are entertaining. Sure. Let's take another look at your unseemly obsessions. Take a look at this and tell me what you see. Hmm. So we've got to associate all these with something to do with money, fortune. So the Emmy option is the only viable one here. Susan Lucci holding an Emmy. I see. Now, how about this one? An SUV crashing into an opulent mansion. And this? An autograph written in Braille. Now this one, what do you see? They're not, they're not always so obvious, but when you think of autograph, you normally think of celebrities. Oh yeah, stock exchange. Elephants at the New York Stock Exchange. And this one? A debit card fed through a document shredder. You seem fairly focused on money, but it's probably nothing to worry about. Thanks, Doc. Do you think I might have artificial personality disorder? Maybe, but people with APD are known for their obsession with money. What's free association like? It's a test of your reactions to things in your life. I say a word, and then you just say or do the first thing that comes into your head. Dance a samba, recite the alphabet, scream at the top of my lungs, that sort of thing? Hmm, interesting. Have we started already? No, but now we will. Ready? Is that the word? No, the word is tumbleweed. So we've got to look out for words that are used with the like to associate with dentists. So tumbleweed isn't one. Promenade. Interesting. Now try this one. Crown. Just do or say whatever comes naturally. And this is how we do it. I feel strangely like punching something. Really? Hmm. Violent reaction to the word. Very interesting. Comb. Sample size. I see. Well, this has been illuminating. Yes? Your responses lead me to believe that you have an unusually violent reaction to dentistry. You should see him at the podiatrist's. It could be symptomatic of artificial personality disorder. I'd better mark this on your chart. Very interesting. We should test you for the other symptoms of APD. 
Whatever you say, Sawbones. I'm not a Sawbones. I'm a psychotherapist. Tomato, tomato. Hey, I'm getting hungry. Hmm. That was only three words, wasn't it? And crown could be quite a few things. Anyway, let's continue on with this dream analysis. Can you really learn anything from my grotesque, nonsensical dreams? Oh, absolutely. They reveal your subconscious. It's like peeling an onion. Yowch! Now just relax and try to remember your dream. Okay, here goes. My dreams always start in the office. But this time, things were different. Mmm, yes, I can picture it. Tell me what happened. I realized there was someone else in the room with me. Oh, you had a special guest. Who was it? So this is, is to associate with marrying your mother. So the only female is Sybil, really. It was you! Me? My, my, my. Oh, I represent your mother. You do? Of course. The feelings of trust, of safety. Besides, I figure the old hag's got to be in there somewhere. That's psychotherapy 101. Insightful! Tell me, in your dream, was I doing anything queer? You did say something pretty queer. You ungrateful pup! I went through three weeks of labor for you! Wow, it is your mother. I was right! As I usually am. I realized there was someone else in the room with me. Oh, who was your special guest? Oops. It was you! Hmm. Or was it really your mother? I didn't notice anything unusual there. Then why do you mention it? I don't know. Interesting. Right, there's something else we need to... I noticed something bizarre in the closet. Yes, we put things in the closet we want to hide away, things we're ashamed of. Please, Sam, what's in your closet? A hidden video camera. Hmm, I think someone may be secretly ashamed of his voyeurism. Nope, I'm proud! No. I noticed something weird sticking out of the rat hole. Mmm. The rats are pests. They represent something bothersome. Tell me, what was in the hole? It was that staple office knick-knack, the clacking balls. Not unlike the ones on your desk. Oh. Do you not like the balls? No, Sybil. I don't like the balls. Well. Were those tire marks in the wall? I'm not going to ask. I remembered that I'd just gotten something from the bakery. Oh, sounds like you and your special guest there were having a little celebration. What did you get? It was a wedding cake, ripe for the toppling. Wait a second. Your mother? You subconsciously want to marry your own mother! Well, this is a blow. This is a definite symptom of artificial personality disorder. Yes. I mean, I hope it's not serious. I'd better mark this on your chart. You have two of the symptoms listed on this form. Am I deranged? I don't want to alarm you, but probably. Can I have your hat when they commit you? Sure, little buddy. Sorry about that little um, update that went on in the background and interrupted the recording. But anyway, how come we've only got two? What went, what, went, what went wrong with the ink blots? Can we do some more ink blots? Those are entertaining. Sure. Let's take another look at your unseemly obsessions. Take a look at this and tell me what you see. So we get like six ink blots and three words associations. All right. Try again. Pennies on the eyes of a dead mime. Interesting. Now, how about this one? I've just mixed it up. 
there is a with the symptoms there's money fame and there's dentist and hairdressing and there's mother and peer so I was looking at the money and the fame and doing both what a wanker anyway An SUV crashing into an opulent mansion. And this? Wallets. My Uncle Louie's moth-eaten wallet. Now this one. What do you see? Elephants at the New York Stock Exchange. And this one? A debit card fed through a document shredder. Hmm. Well, judging by your responses, you seem to be fairly obsessed with Money. That's a symptom of artificial personality disorder. I'd better mark it on your chart. Wow! It must be artificial personality disorder. You've got all the signs. I bet I can get a paper out of this. Best ship me off to some sort of home for former child stars, then. I've signed this admissions form, but you'll have to arrange your own transportation. I'm about to be really busy publishing the details of your case. Since you're crazy, can I drive? Jumping vehicular homicide, no! Right. No prizes for guessing where we're going now. Come on, little buddy. There's justice to be served. Can we get ice cream afterwards? Justice makes me hungry. This reminds me of that place where Aunt Trudy lives with the medicine smell and the rubber sheets and the enormous mute Indian. Sounds like a million laughs. Yeah, mostly after medication time. Where is everybody? <laughs> Pulchritude above doubts. This is Culture's Clubhouse. Jumping Lon Chaney in a boffo fright wig. Brady Culture, I presume. You know who I am? Wow! Evil plans really do work. Don't get too excited, Stretch Pants. The freelance police are here. Yes, actually. I've been waiting for you. Really? Next time, try leaving the front door open. Save us all some grief. Allow me to explain. <coughs> Uh-oh. I think we just triggered a soliloquy. Good thing I have the attention span of a pint of yak butter. I never wanted much. Just to be universally loved, that's all. And to be number one in the TV ratings for the 1971 fall season. But no. Those worthless hacks, the soda poppers, with their matching shirts and their cute little jingles, they came on opposite me and stole my audience! I was never offered another role. And now you two vigilantes won't even let a poor, down-on-his-luck actor mass-hypnotize the entire viewing public to become his worshipful fans forever! How cruel. Is it over? I think so. So? Whoops. Since you've ruined the beautiful irony of having my arch-rivals run my promotional campaign, I'm afraid you'll just have to take their places. In your dreams, culture! No, my friends. In yours. Hey, that tickles! Become... Video Delivery Man. What? What's happening? Oh no! Oh! No! What, what are you doing? I don't know. I... You were in on it all along. I told you it was a conspiracy. I told you, but then you already knew, didn't you? No, Bosco. I must deliver videos. 
Call the CIA. Call Interpol. Call Mickey Rooney. Must deliver Mickey Rooney videos. Ah! Hmm. I think this is this is probably a good place to leave it here. So I will will return this weekend with the last episode of Culture Shock and maybe the start of the next episode. My work schedule has been a bit busy the last couple of weeks. But for now, we'll leave it with Max endlessly dropping off videos. Take care. Bye-bye.